Hello guys, welcome to KP Classes. My name is Varinder Pal Singh and today we are here to talk about igneous petrology. Okay, so igneous petrology subject, it is very important for us. So if you are preparing for jam examination or gate examination or GSI or Okay, so you will find questions from igneous petrology in every exam. Okay, so let's talk about all these examinations one by one. Let's say we are talking about gate examination. Okay, so in gate examination, most of the times I have seen at least three questions from igneous petrology, and those, and sometimes for maximum four questions I have come across. And what they have done, we they have done divided the syllabus into we can, but we can do we can divide the syllabus in the three sections okay and from all those three sections questions comes so first part second part third part so questions are going to come from those portions okay so in gate examination three to four questions are going to be there but when we are talking about gs examination at least expect 10 questions so 10 questions means that it is going to have very much importance in your ranks okay from those 10 questions you guys can easily solve at least five to six questions okay but if you have to go higher if you want to solve nine to ten questions then <coughs> you need to study it okay so here while i will i will be teaching this subject i will be dividing the syllabus into sections because i have analyzed the previous examination and i have seen from which portions they are asking questions okay so we will be dividing the entire syllabus into three to four sections then we will be studying one by one and questions comes like that only so one section one question then second question one question then the third section one question then some if they want to add question then they ask from third or fourth section one more questions okay so the first part of your igneous geology so let's talk about igneous igneous petrology so first portion here is your introduction so in introduction we talk about various theories of igneous rocks uh, origin of solar system origin of universe uh, and your meteoroids uh, okay and you guys sometimes they ask questions from this part sometimes they skip this part also okay so if they are asking three to four four at least four questions then they are going to ask a question from this portion also okay now the second part is your igneous structures igneous structures and textures one question they ask from igneous textures and structures so in structures we are going to talk about uh, extrusive and intrusive structures and very many types of structures okay and then textures so one question they are going to ask from igneous structure and texture and 99 percent of the times question is coming from this portion one question at least one question in gate examination now on the third portion is your classification hundred percent question is coming from this classification portion so every year you guys can see question from classification in gate jam gsa examination and net examination also so this portion is very important okay so every time so if you guys want to download previous examination you will find questions from classification part okay then last part is your phase rules means thermodynamics and most of the times we are getting questions 100 percent we can say 100 percent here surety that the question is going to come from phase rule so these two portions are very important classification and phase you will get questions from these sections in gate jam okay most of the times in net they are not asking questions from phase rules 
okay sometimes they skip it also but for net uh, for gate and jam examination these tools are of extreme importance and the questions they are asking they are very simple once you get the idea okay so you will solve all the questions so what i am going to do today i am going to teach one of top one of the topic just to make you guys understand how easy igneous petrology is okay so let's start with let's pick one topic so i am going to talk about meteoroids because meter of from meteoroids questions are getting asked every year so what are meteoroids meteoroids so before getting into meteoroids we should have a idea what are meteoroids basically meteoroids are your solid extra terrestrial objects okay so they are part of asteroid belt uh, comets but when they are falling on the surface of the earth they are known as meteoroids okay guys but why we need to study them why they are important that should be known to us okay so they are important because they are representing early to intermediate stage of the development of solar nebula because they represent original composition they are believed to have not differentiated some meteorites have not gone differentiation since their formation okay so here no subsequent alteration or differentiation has happened that is why they are imp important to us okay so they are going to provide us valuable clues to the makeup and development of our solar system so whatever the meteorites we have seen on the earth we have classified them into three categories irons stony irons and stones okay so meteorites we have classified into threes iron stony iron then we are having stones so these are three types of meteorites which we come across okay so let's talk about them one by one so let's start with iron first they are very easy okay so if we talk about composition of iron they are made up of metallic iron nickel alloys they are having iron nickel alloy composition they are very easy to detect on the surface of the earth how because on the surface of earth these iron nickel alloys how they are coming okay because we know that when the differentiation of the earth happened all the iron and nickel alloys they started getting concentrated into the core so if we are finding them on the surface so they must have been a part of meteorites but the problem here with the iron meteorites is that these are believed to be fragments of core of some extraterrestrial planet so if it is a core of a extraterrestrial planet that means that that means that it has gone differentiation so if it has already differentiated then it is not going to help us in understanding the evolution or development of our solar system okay so here this is they are not going to help us okay now this when we are finding iron meteorites here they are having two types of error. it is representing sidrophile as well as chalcophile character sidrophile as well as chalcophile character so in case of sidrophile characters it will be having iron nickel alloys
okay but when we are talking about chalcophile it will be having iron sulfide phase okay guys <coughs> now the important one for us is iron nickel alloys okay now in iron nickel alloys we are having two phases okay but those two phases has been absorbed from a single homogeneous mixture okay guys so basically those two phases in this iron nickel alloys are your kamectite and tenite we will find these two phases in these iron nickel alloys kamectite and tenite t a e tenite okay guys but these you will find these kamectites and tenites they are usually intergrown in a cross hatched pattern okay so you will be finding a cross hatched pattern of hex solution lamellae here and that texture is known as widman staten texture and this question was asked in previous year examination texture so this texture is known as widman staten texture and widman staten texture is mostly seen in iron meteorites and in iron meteorites we are going to find iron with zero valency in most of the earth we are going to come across plus 2 and plus 3 valency but in case of iron meteorites we are going to find iron with zero valency okay guys so this is all about iron meteorites okay so let's move towards the stony irons so stony irons so as the name suggest it is having two types of parts okay so one is stony and what is iron so by stony i means to say that it is having silicate segregation also so basically lithophile element in it so by iron you guys can say that it is having siderophile and chalcophile so basically stony irons are mixtures of stony as well as iron meteorites so if it is having iron one so they are basically what they are they are again differentiated so they are of not importance to us but the important one for us is your stones okay guys so the important is your third one so here we have talked about iron stony iron and stony irons so both of them are differentiated so now we are going to talk about stones stones so i told you that it will be having a lithophile element so that means that it will be made up of silicate minerals so composition will be silicate minerals okay guys so they so when if they are having silicate minerals present in him them but on the surface of the earth we are having rocks which are again having silicate minerals in them so it will become very difficult for us to differentiate between them okay so they are not easily differentiated okay so we are going to only find stones if we see the meteorite falling okay so there is a, another classification of a meteorites they are known as falls and finds this is another classification of meteorite so the finds one are which we are going to find like stony iron and iron one because they will be highly dense they will be heavy those composition cannot be present on the surface of the earth okay so they we can easily find them but when we are talking about stony one we cannot find them we can only find them only if we have seen them falling on the 
सरफेस ऑफ द अर्थ सो फॉल सो दे कम अंडर फॉल्स ओके सो दिस इज अनदर क्लासिफिकेशन सो हेयर वी हैव क्लासिफाइड स्टोनी मीटोराइड्स इनटू टू टाइप्स कॉन्ड्राइड्स एज वेल एज ए कॉन्ड्राइड्स सो दिस क्लासिफिकेशन इज बेस्ड ऑन प्रेजेंस ऑफ द कॉन्ड्रियूल सो कॉन्ड्राइट so this classification is based on the presence of the chondriole so in case of chondriote chondriole is present but in case of a chondriote a chondrite chondriole is absent okay guys but what is this chondriole okay so why it is becoming important for us because chondriole is is a spherical silicate intrusion it is a silly spherical silicate intrusion and its diameter is around 0.2 to 0.3 mm okay so it is a intrusion present inside a mineral okay so it is having a very small size so that indicates that it has gone rapid cooling okay so the rapid cooling so when the rapid cooling can happen so during the cooler nebula stage formation when our large amount of heat was getting removed from our nebula so that it is representing that stage okay so probably it formed after condensation okay so this chondriole uh, has formed after condensation but before the formation of the planet smears so this is representing very early stage of the development of our <coughs> universe so they are considered most primitive okay so if we are finding chondriules present then we guys can say that they are undifferentiated because if differentiated has happened because while we were studying of a uh, structure of the earth we know that during differentiation heating has happened gravitational setting gravitational collapse has happened so because of that a large amount of heat has generated so this chondriule must have been destroyed okay but if we are finding chondriole that represent that it has not been differentiated okay so this becomes important for us this chondrite but if our chondrite is absent if our chondrite is absent that means that it has undergone differentiation okay so with the time that portion has gone differentiation so all while studying chondrites we have prepared many models to represent the original composition of the earth so here we have prepared a special model which is known as chondritic earth model so that chondritic earth model that is also known as cem that is your chondritic earth model okay so this chondritic earth model based on the studies done on the chondrites it provides a very close fit to the composition of earth for most elements okay but there are few major differences also but it is a very close fit okay guys so this is all about meteorites okay guys so similarly you guys can see that all the topics will be very easy to understand okay and while i will be teaching for gate i will be talking about these topics with the gate perspectives okay so the types of the questions so the mode of teaching will be different for J jam as well as gate and net js because different questions are getting asked in so we have to prepare according to the exam okay guys so best of luck for your examinations thank you